Welcome back. Now, you've heard the saying, saving the best to the last. Well, tonight we have, Kate, exactly how much of a death wish do these guys have? A pretty big one. Jumping out of a plane is bad enough. Jumping out of a plane on a surfboard is pretty dangerous. But jumping out of a plane on a surfboard and deliberately spinning as fast as possible upside down, now that's something else. <laughs> Former engineer Tim Porter and one-time psychologist Chris Gage are skydivers. Skydivers with a world-beating ambition. Taking to the skies above southern Spain, these two defy not only gravity, but the physical limits of human endurance too. This is no ordinary freefall. These are no ordinary skydivers. Chris and Tim are expert sky surfers. A sky surfer rides a custom-made skyboard during freefall reaching speeds of 150 miles an hour, spinning, twisting and surfing through the air. The camera flyer records the performance with a helmet-mounted camcorder, a vital role in this two-man discipline. Leaving the plane at 13,000 feet, the sky surfer has only 60 seconds to execute elaborate gymnastics. They require unbelievable athletic ability and control to cope with the huge forces that tear at their bodies. Today, these two men, partners and rivals, are about to attempt the world record for the most dangerous manoeuvre of them all, the helicopter spin. That's where the sky surfing board is positioned underneath you and you rotate very, very fast. Both men are going to attempt the highest number of rotations in 20 seconds, setting a brand new Guinness world record. There are four major dangers to this manoeuvre. One, collision. Flyer and cameraman stay dangerously close. Even when they're just small, minor collisions, they can hurt. Two, altitude awareness. The flyer cannot read his altimeter, and so he can't tell how near the ground he is. You're disorientated, your brain spun out. That's the danger area. Three, the pain. Revolving at four times a second, the blood is sent rushing to the body's extremities. It's like you've got two needles shoved in your hands simultaneously. It's a very, very painful move. Four, blacking out. The G-forces involved starve the brain of oxygen, creating the risk of passing out. The consequences are unthinkable. Because of the awesome stresses involved, each man will only have one attempt at the world record. What a day, hey? First Chris will attempt the record whilst Tim films him. Then the men will swap roles. They're both dependent teammates and bitter rivals. Or malfunctions. <laughs> So when, we, uh, when you come and film me later for my attempt at beating your helicopters, you're going to give me a very good camera then? Nah, I don't think so. It can be a very safe sport, but if not done properly, it can be a fatal sport. With only minutes to go, the pressure is beginning to take its toll on Chris, but his partner's competitive streak is not helping. Let's go see what he's going to do now, shall we? <laughs> This part of Andalusia is locally known as the frying pan of Spain. Chris is literally about to jump out of the frying pan and into the fire. I'm feeling tired and I'm feeling nervous. To be honest, I am very nervous, OK? This is a Guinness World Record and I want it to be the best that I can. And there's a lot of pressure on me now. Chris is away. He has 20 seconds to clock up the largest number of revolutions. The clock starts with the release of the ribbon. He's manoeuvring into position. There it goes. He's really spinning now. That's maximum revolutions. He'll really feel the pain. He's over halfway now. This is very fast. That's 20 seconds and he's slowing down. He needs all his strength to get back upright. He'll be feeling sick and disorientated now. A last desperate tumble, but he's got the chute open. Fantastic, that's really set the standard. He looks delighted. Woo! How was it? Wow, oh, my head is still soup at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah, that was fast. I think um, that was a good one. With no time to celebrate, 
Tim now knows that Chris has set a seemingly impossible task. It's a good exit. He's in control. He's kicked the ball before he was properly inverted. It sent him into a rocking pendulum motion. He can't control it. He's losing vital seconds. This doesn't look as fast as Chris. He must control it. Oh, he's lost it. Now he's in trouble. One final grasp with the web gloves, and he's back on top. Amazing recovery. And that's the shoot deployed. Immediately, he knows he's not done enough. Not good. Ah, I lost it. What happened? Lost it. Just didn't work, you know. I tried too hard, I think. I think he's thinking he's blown it. My technique on that particular jump was uh, really lousy, you know. It's just uh, I placed uh, too much, um, uh, thought about it too much, focused too much, had too much of a tense body, too rigid. But the final verdict rests with the official adjudicator. Just take a look at the two flyers compared. It's immediately obvious that Chris has the edge. He's reached maximum revolutions. He's much faster and he's more stable in the air than Tim. Chris 64, Tim 45. It's official, it's absolutely fine, 20 seconds. That is a new world record, congratulations. It'll be nice to have that record and maybe I'll be beating Chris in the future with it. Who knows, with Chris or maybe without him. So on this occasion, Chris walks off with the glory. But Tim is determined that that record won't stand for long.